Hi guys, welcome back. So if you click this video, you're probably a little bit interested as to what gear I've built up over the past couple of years since I've been traveling and taking photos. Let's find out. Thanks. So first things first is my bag. It is kind of nice looking. I love it. I think it's beautiful. It took me ages to find. I was looking for ages for one that I really liked. Um, nothing in the bag, don't worry. It's relatively new, it cost me about 100 quid, and not only does it look nice, and it's cheap, it does the job, it's the perfect size for my kit. So, yeah, good little bag. I'll put a link in the description if you wanna check any of these products out, go have a look. So I shoot Sony. I'm currently using the A7 III. It's mirrorless, which means it's super small and super light. So it shoots 24 megapixel photos, which is great. It's perfect for the work that I do. I know there's cameras out there now that shoot like 61 megapixels, but for me, it's perfect. And so I just told you 24 megapixels is perfect. Well, I actually just went out and bought a new camera. <laughs> 61 megapixels. I'll make a video about why I bought it, but I needed it. I needed it for something. Its video capabilities are also really, really good. So it shoots 4K 24 frames, which it's perfect for this YouTube talking to camera, A roll basically. And then it shoots 1080p up to 120 frames per second. So you can get that nice, smooth, buttery, lovely B roll, which we all appreciate. So for me, working as a photographer and kind of dabbling in this YouTube situation, what I'm dabbling in right now, this camera is kind of perfect. Now let's talk lenses. So I went for all prime lenses, which I'm probably gonna make a video on and explain why I did that at some stage, so I'll not tell you too much, but basically it's because the super small, super light, I wanted to keep as light a kit as possible, so Prime was the way for me to achieve that. So first up, we've got the 24mm G Master lens, which is a beast. It's great for filming all these YouTube videos. Blah, 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 blah because it gets super close because it's nice and wide so I can get the mic close enough to get the audio nice. Not only do I use it for YouTube, but it comes in hand when you're in tight scenarios with photography. It's not super wide, so it doesn't totally distort things and make things look weird, but it's just wide enough and I really like the focal length. It does sometimes make you look weird if you try and take portraits with it, like your face looks a bit long and stuff, but for all those reasons that I've just talked about, is great. So I also have the 35mm 1.8. So the 35mm is a lens that I never ever take off the camera. Literally everywhere I go, if I'm taking a camera, I've got the 35mm on. It's just a perfect focal lens so you can get tight and you can get portraits and you don't look distorted, you look great. And you can also, you know, take a few steps back and take a landscape shot with the same lens, which is kind of crazy, but it's just that perfect sweet spot to do both. So if you're looking for a lens that you're never going to want to take off, 35mm is for you. Finally, the 85mm. I absolutely love this lens. I don't actually use it enough. It is quite tight, so it, sometimes you have to be in a big open space to use it. But this lens is so, so sharp. It's unbelievably sharp. I've never shot with a lens that's so sharp. It's nice and compressed, so it offers you that beautiful separation and beautiful bokeh, which we all, again, appreciate. Right, next up is my flying camera. <laughs> so when we set off traveling, I was like, yeah, we had 100% one drone. It's actually my third drone that I've owned. I sold the first one after having it for like two or three months and upgraded to a better one before we went traveling. And then I lost the second one in Australia which was very, very sad. And then the third one, the one which I have now, is the DJI Mavic Air 2. The drone is something that I don't use all the time, because sometimes you're a bit restricted as to where you can use it, but it's so much fun to use, and you get a real buzz when you do use it. And when you get a good shot, it's, it's, it's just from a completely different perspective. And to throw like a couple of drone shots into a YouTube video just gives you a little bit more of a cool feel, like they're, they're always a little bit epic. If you know how to fly it and you can get some good little shots, then yeah, it, it upgrades your video, it bumps it up a little bit. So the drone shoots 48 megapixel photos. It's obviously on a lot smaller sensor than the camera, so the, the drone photos, are, they're nowhere near as good as what you take on the camera, but they're getting better and better and better. And for your YouTube videos, it shoots 4K up to 60 frames per second, so you can slow that down a little bit. and. It shoots 1080 up to 240 frames per second, which is super cool, it's like super slow-mo. And it flies, what, what else do we need? What else do you need? Love drones, you should get a drone. 
link down below somewhere. This next thing is also brilliant in its own way. So the next thing is the GoPro Hero 9. So we got this last year and we've filmed a few fun things with it. We filmed the whole vlog on Fraser Island with it. <laughs> we also filmed the Great Barrier Reef situation with it. And I was really surprised, the footage looked great. The same as the drone, it films 4K up to 60 frames and 1080 up to 240 frames per second. And you can throw it around, it goes underwater, you can take it skiing, you can take it scuba diving, you can do all these crazy things with it. I'm not sure if you can take it scuba diving. You can go snorkeling with it, but scuba diving, you should look that up before you do that. So we can shoot from the air, we can shoot from the ground with our camera, we can shoot underwater, we can launch a GoPro around, like, what else do we need? <laughs> what else do we actually need? So next up is the stuff that's slightly, it's not a camera, so it's slightly less exciting, but it's something that you really need and it's the tripod. It comes in handy, especially for these videos and if you shoot in landscapes and you wanna shoot long exposures and things like that. So I invested in this tripod. It wasn't, it didn't break the bank at all. Um, it folds up really small and it slots just in the side of my bag and it's super light, so it's perfect. Then I've got my variable ND, which is like sunglasses for your camera. So this comes in handy if you're shooting video on a super bright day and you don't want to crank your shutter speed up. Also, if you're shooting long exposure photography, maybe during the day, you'd need this too. So essentially sunglasses for your camera. So next up, we've got my mic and my mic is a Video Mic Pro, I think. It's actually a Rode Video Mic NTG. I got mixed up, I'll show you. The reason I bought a mic was for YouTube. Because the in-camera mic sounds like this. See, it's not the best, is it? The difference with the mic on is, it's worth investing in. Well, I think it is. What do you think? I have a couple of small lights which are used. I've just realized my lights died behind me there. I wonder when that died. Maybe that's gonna have ruined my video. Anyway, I don't care. I've got a couple of small lights which light me for YouTube and if I'm ever struggling for light, if I'm in a dark, dingy room for photo, they also come in handy and the tiny, which is great. So last but not least, and probably one of my favorite things actually is the Peak Design strap, neck strap and wrist strap for the camera. I don't know about you, but when you first buy a camera and you've got the and you've got the strap that comes with it, you're always, as soon as you take it off, you're fighting against the strap to kind of take a good photo because it's always getting in your way. Now Peak Design, obviously, they came up with these little ideas where you can easily clip on and off and it's super handy. I use the wrist strap loads, it just doesn't really ever get in the way and if you're gonna drop your camera, it's not gonna smash into a million pieces on the floor. I also use the neck strap if I'm going on like a hike and I wanna strap the camera across me. But yeah, these are great, super easy to clip on and off and yeah, they save me, they save me a ton of time and a lot of frustration. So this is my minimal run and gun travel photography YouTube kit that I use every day of my life and it all squeezes into that backpack for when I need to travel or I'm moving places or I'm just going on a day out and I wanna take it all with me. Perfect. Well, that was fun. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, help me out, push the like button, subscribe if you're not already subscribed for more videos, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.